teaching uh, his, uh, in Pakistan, the Sheikh then traveled to uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. And there the Sheikh, Alhamdulillah, he met one of the leading qurra in Medina, it was Hassan al-Sha'ar, rahimahullah ta'ala. The Sheikh actually born in 1867, roughly, I don't know the exact date, and he passed away in 1976 or 77. In other words, he lived for 109 years plus. Mash. Sheikh read to him, Alhamdulillah, uh, I read the whole Quran to him. And this is the most beautiful thing, the khatam of the Quran, the last session that he had with the Sheikh when he received ijazah, it was in the Rawdah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet's Masjid, when he received ijazah. Later on, Alhamdulillah, the Sheikh, uh, as I said, he was appointed to be a teacher in the Prophet's Masjid. And the place that where he teaches, as I said to you, is for more than 55 years. And it's, and, you know, and it's continuing, Alhamdulillah. And he created a lot of students. And Alhamdulillah, uh, the Sheikh was telling us other days that he has students all over the world, over 58 countries now where his students are leading Salah. So Alhamdulillah, his students are leading Salah in Mecca. You know, Sheikh Ali Jabir, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, if you remember that's the student, he led Salah in Mecca. Sheikh uh, Abdul Muhsin Al-Qasim, the current Imam in the Prophet's Masjid, is also leading Salah now in the Prophet's Masjid. And some of his students, Alhamdulillah, they also led Salah in Masjid Al-Aqsa as well. And 58 countries, as I said to you, the people, Alhamdulillah, the students are leading Salah there as well. Uh, the Sheikh has written many books, Alhamdulillah, all his books are in Arabic, so I'm not going to mention all the publication names. Uh, but he also traveled, he traveled over 38 countries around the world to, to observe teaching and also to, to, to observe the madrasas, how they teach their as well. Uh, two places I, mean, I would like to mention, one is Morocco, because we have a lot of Moroccan brothers here. Uh, Sheikh Mohammed, Sheikh, the, the king, uh, Al Hassan Al Thani, he used to invite him every Ramadan, and in the custom Maliki, in the palace, the Sheikh used to recite the Quran, it was televised all over the Arab world. For 12 consecutive years, the Sheikh recited the Quran, the riwayah of Warsh and Nafi al Madani, and that was recorded and televised. Sheikh Ronda for 12 years. Over there, he met two leading Quran. One was Sheikh Khalil al Husari, uh, and they shared the same room, Khalil al Husari, the Sheikh read to him, took ijazah from him, and also there was a, a, a 13 Qiraat in front of the king, Sheikh Abdul Bas of the Summer, he recited, and then he was Sheikh Bashir as well. Alhamdulillah, they both shared the same room again and both read to one another. So these are the leading Qurra that the Sheikh met, Alhamdulillah. Uh, and then, Alhamdulillah, I said to you, another country worth mentioning is, is uh, Syria. Sheikh went to Damascus. <coughs> and in Masjid al Umawi, Alhamdulillah, the Sheikh also uh, stayed there for approximately two months. And he taught the people there with leading Qurra, you know, like Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Hussein al Khattab, and many other Qurra to attend. And where the Sheikh, Alhamdulillah, you know, they exchange views in regards to Qiraat and Tajweed. This is a very brief biography of our Sheikh, Alhamdulillah. We are very honored. You know, for the past uh, 12 years, the Sheikh been visiting UK specifically to listen to his students. And Alhamdulillah, 12 years, it's only the last two years due to COVID, he couldn't attend. And in these 12 years, Alhamdulillah, more than approximately 30 students, they have received ijazah from him. I, they read the whole Quran to him. Ustaz Hafizur Rahman, who led the Salah, he read the whole Qiraat Ashra, every single Qiraat, one by one, 10 Qiraat, if rather than one after another for 10, for six, seven years, I think it took him all together. Sheikh has many students, but he said in the whole of Europe and UK, he's the only student who read to the Sheikh the whole ten Qiraat and got ijazah from him as well. Similarly, we have 30, Alhamdulillah, from UK, brothers and sisters as well. Alhamdulillah, the Sheikh has, that's his legacy, Alhamdulillah, that he's leaving behind, you know, may Allah give us a barakah in his age. If you ask the Sheikh how old are you, say, I'm only about 35, 40, don't ask him again. So Sheikh saying that, inshallah, this is his legacy, that students will be reciting the Quran, and they will be teaching. Malana Najm al you know, the other day we had a, a small little gathering with the Sheikh. He gathered all his students, and he gave the news to the Sheikh, saying that, mashallah, your students are now teaching others as well. And, you know, within a rough estimation, we'll have over 300 students, alhamdulillah. The Sheikh taught 30, those 30 now, teaching over 300 students as well. And this is the reason and the Sheikh should say that tell everyone only one hadith. The best amongst you is the one who learns the Quran and teaches to others. Sheikh has a commentary in addition. He says, tell them also that if you can't become the two, that if you don't, be, you know, if, you don't, if you are not the students of the Quran or the teacher of the Quran, you could definitely become the third. That is, help the students and the teachers as well. Allah will also include you amongst those and those who are the best people 
you know, as the Prophet said, I'm not going to address the Shaykh, ask the Shaykh to say a few words, inshallah. اب یہ طوفان آنے والا ہے جو آ چکا ہے انگلینڈ میں اس میں آپ نے اپنے بچوں کے لیے کیا سوچا ہے انگلینڈ میں یہ طوفان آ چکا ہے جو آنے والا ہے اس سے زیادہ خطرناک قسم کا آپ نے اپنے بچوں کے لیے کیا سوچا ہے The Sheikh is asking, we all know what's happening in the UK. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big storm. Okay, so obviously, metaphorically speaking, is coming and it's coming in, you know, it's a huge storm coming in front of us. What, especially, uh, you know, uh, for our children, what have you guys prepared? What are you thinking? How are you going to tackle this? I'm asking this question. For my Islam. میرے خیال میں ہمیں بچوں کو اپنی اسلامی روایات اور اسلامی تعلیم سے بہت روشناس کرانا چاہیے دس از ویری امپورٹنٹ اس کا علاج یہ ہے جناب علی آپ کے اپنے اسکول اپنے کالج اپنے یونیورسٹی اس میں حکومت کا پورا نصاب اور آپ کی دینی تربیت آپ اندر در گئے کہ ایک آدمی ڈالی منڈا شراب پینے والا سب سب کو کرنے والا وہ ایک کالج کا پرنسپل ہو اور ایک کالج کے پرنسپل ہو مولانا مجاہد علی دونوں کے طلبا میں کیا فرق ہوا خدا کے لیے اپنے اسکول اپنے کالج اپنے یونیورسٹی اس میں ہر قسم کے فنون ہوں جسے حکومت کے ہیں اس میں آپ کی دینی تربیت ہو سب سے بڑی چیز ہے تربیت کی سب سے پہلا درجہ تو ہے عقل حلال کا ایمان کے بعد پہلا درجہ ہے نقمہ حلال نقمہ حلال جب پیٹ میں جائے گا جتنی اچھی اعمال ہیں سب کچھ آگے بڑھ کر ہوتے جائے گا اور خدا نے پسار نقمہ حلال اور حرام پیٹ میں گیا تو یہ بھی بولے گا کہ جتنے بھی اعمال صحیح ہیں خراب ہیں آٹومیٹک ہوتے جائے گے اس وقت جو سب سے بڑا مسئلہ ہے عالم اسلامی میں نقمہ نقمہ حلال کا ہے نقمہ حلال ہے اور جن لوگوں کا نقمہ حلال ہے ان کے بچوں کو دیکھ رہے ہی رہے گے تو خدا کے لیے سب سے پہلے تمام کیجئے کہ بچوں کو حلال دی جائے اور اس کے بعد دینی تربیت دیجئے دینی تربیت بھی اسکول ہے لازم ہے آپ کو پڑھ لکھ کے آگے جانا چاہیے آپ کو معلوم نہیں کہ سن چالیس تک کیا ہونے والا ہے معلوم ہے آپ کو سن چالیس تک یہ اس ملک کے بعد ہی بالکل بدل والے 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 ہیں پہل کے لوگ زیادہ ہوں گے یہاں کے لوگ کم ہوں گے اس وقت کیا کریں گے ہندو سکھ قادیانی شیعہ سب سے آگے ہوں گے مسلمان بالکل بھی ہوں مسلمان بالکل اس وقت غفلت میں ہے نہ ان کا کوئی کالج ہے نہ ان کے سپور ہے نہ ان کے یورش ہے کتنی بڑی تعداد ہے مسلمان بھی ہیں گلین میں ایک سارے غفلت میں خدا کا اور تعالیٰ تعالیٰ مرد کر رہے ہیں جس چاہیں چاہیں سے جو تفان آنے والا ہے خدا کے لئے اس کے لئے پڑھا اپنے بچوں کو تیار کیجئے ہیں اپنے اسکول اپنے کالج اپنے یورش ہے اور دین اتر پرمیر کے ساتھ تب تو بھی بچ سکتے ہیں ورنہ خدا نے خواہ پر ایسا چلتا رہا ہے ان کے مہمہ ہیں اس کو لئے کالجی میں آپ کے بچے جاتے رہے ہیں تو آپ کے ہاتھ سے گئے بچے ہیں The chef is saying that uh, after he asking everyone that the, the storm that is coming in front of you what preparation are you going to make for it what have you done, what have you thought about it and then you know another brother he said that we have, uh, he gave his opinion the chef said that let me just share my opinion very quickly that is I believe that we need to, we all have to get together and make this plan and make our own school. We have to have our own Islamic school, we have to have our own college, we have to have our own university. And, and we will, and doesn't matter what syllabus that we teach, as long as we have our own terbiyah. So the terbiyah is from us. The terbiyah is actually from us, so we will be giving them the Islamic nurturing and upbringing. And, and the syllabus keep everything, keep all the uh, things that is needed today. You know, all the uh, all the subjects, that's not a problem, you can keep all the subjects, but the terbiyah has to become has to come from us. Then he said that imagine you have a, a religious head teacher, someone who we, we, we know and he has his religious background. What do you think the students will be? You know, and the second thing that he said that also you need to feed your children from lawful source, from halal. The look has to be halal, meaning that whatever they eat, you have to make sure, make a big effort that what's going into the stomach is from lawful source. Because then they will come out like diamonds and gems. So otherwise, 
we are a very uh, difficult years that we're going to be facing. Then he said that you know the next 40 years or so, you know what's going to happen? You will see there will be more foreigners here than anywhere else. What are you going to do about it? So therefore, I'm going back and I'm say, the chef saying that I would like to stress on this point that take this matter very seriously. We need to have our own school. We need to have our own college. We need to have our own universities. But you know, it doesn't matter the syllabus. All the syllabus that are needed, keep that. All the books that are needed, all the subjects that are needed, you keep that. But the most important thing that we must do is that we have our own Islamic tarbiyah. And then, inshallah, with this we could tackle all the problems that we are about to face. और अक्सर तो ये लोग सुरा फातिया अगला छोड़ते हैं अब आप अंदाजा लगाइए कि सुरा फातिया नमाज में कितने दिन पढ़ पढ़ते हैं अगर सुरा फातिया ठीक नहीं है तो नमाज कैसे है कयामत में सारा सबसे पहले सवाल तो क्या करते हैं नमाज का होगा और जिसकी सुरा फातिया तेरे ठीक नहीं है तकरीबन मैं तो दुनिया के 38 देश चुका हूं जितने जहां-जहां मुसलमान हैं और सब देश चुका हूं मसल्ला तलब आप कर बता दो बता दो मैंने सर्वे के मुताबिक कम से कम कम से कम नब्बे फीसद मॉल भी गोला मार सुरा पता नहीं ठीक से बोलते हैं हम लोग मुझे मेरे बुजुर्ग शेख आप के हम अशाला इमाम भी बहुत अच्छे हैं गोला मार बुजुर्ग शेख दूसरा उतारी है भी भी है और भी है बता के लिए कुरान को सीख and the Sheikh said that, and the last thing that I would like to say is that please make an effort to learn the Quran correctly. Make sure that you recite accurately. Because to learn the Quran correctly and to recite it accurately, it is compulsory, it is obligatory. It is not, it is not just a communal obligation, it is, an, it is an obligatory upon every individual to learn the Quran and to recite it correctly. The Sheikh is also saying that, for example, Surah Al-Fatiha, learn how to perfect reading of Surah Al-Fatiha. Surah Al-Fatiha is so important to us, we have to recite in every rakat of the Salah that we pray. And if the Surah Al-Fatiha is not correct, and if we don't recite Surah Al-Fatiha correctly, our Salah is not correct. Then the Sheikh is saying that I would like to say, uh, share something with you. According to my observation, this is my personal observation, is that I've been to over 38 countries around the world. I've noticed that even the scholars, they make mistakes when they recite Surah Al-Fatiha. Forget the general mass. I'm talking about the scholars who are supposed to be perfect. Okay, Alhamdulillah, uh, uh, you have uh, Hafizur Rahman and few Imams here, they recite okay. Uh, but you, yourself, everyone here, take this on yourself that I'm going to perfect my recitation, inshallah, <coughs> learn how to recite the Quran correctly. <laughs> The Sheikh saying that my uh, my opinion is this. I give you a view that once a week we have a dars here and everyone gather and we will inshallah that I correct our surah al-fatiha. Would we do this inshallah? The Sheikh saying that, you know, inshallah, is telling me that, you know, since you're the Imam here, why can't you have like, two days where you will uh, listen to everyone's Surah Al Fatiha and correct the Surah Al Fatiha? So, inshallah, this is something that we will plan to do, inshallah. The Sheikh saying that he went to once uh, to, a, to, to America, uh, to the city of San, Fran San Francisco. He went to San Francisco and where he prayed the very big masjid, he prayed salah behind an imam. And he said that he recited in his beautiful, melodious voice, but he was reciting as the Sheikh read to you. 
basically the way he was talking is incorrect. It's like he had a, it's like the laughter that was shadda. He said, Alhamdulillah, Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. The Sheikh said, after he finished the Salah, I asked him, tell me which of the Imam recitation were you reading? Because I, I don't understand what you're doing. And then the Sheikh said that I took him to the side, Alhamdulillah, I made an effort behind. It took me three days, Alhamdulillah, and then I told him how to recite Surah Al-Fatiha correctly. This was a very big masjid. It was a center in San Francisco, and this is the state of an imam. So what, what do you think of the general mass, how they are reciting the Quran? That's why it's very important. We make an effort and learn how to recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Amen. 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 The Sheikh concluded now by making some dua for all of us in the May Allah give you good health. May Allah grant, you, uh, grant all of us uh, health and prosperity and happiness in this dunya and also in the hereafter as well. The Sheikh also said that I also make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look after all of you and your children as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also make this masjid bigger than what it is. I, the Sheikh said, I want this masjid to be six times bigger than the, what I see now. I want to see thousands and thousands of people praying salah. And uh, I think he said something about it. Anyway, then he said that, uh, he said, you know, I continued leading uh, salah here. So that's the message oh to the first people. Oh <laughs> and he said, that he's regarding the masjid being more bigger, six times bigger, probably thinking how. He said, this is not far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan. We have to make this intention. I want to make this much bigger, get more people in here, and inshallah to bring better imams here. Making this kind of intention, Sheikh saying that this is not very, it's not far away from the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We we'll make an intention. Sheikh, <laughs> So, uh, Brother Shafi asked that the uh, Sheikh, have you got the opportunity to pray in Salah inside the Kaaba? The Sheikh said, Alhamdulillah, I prayed twice. <laughs> then the Sheikh said that, you know, when I, was given the, uh, ability, when I was given the chance to go inside the Kaaba, I decided to pray in all four corners because you could pray in any direction now. Once you're inside the Kaaba, any direction you could pray. She said, Alhamdulillah, I prayed in all four directions. Sheikh, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, the Sheikh took. Uh, about 45 minutes, alhamdulillah, inside. Shafi asked, what did you see? The Sheikh said that, you know, uh, when I went inside, the majesty of the Kaaba took over me. I can't, I can't describe what I saw. I just prayed my salah and came out. Mm -hmm. It took me 45 minutes to, to, to pray my salah. Inside, wow. inside, inside the, the Kaaba. Inside, inside the Kaaba. Inside. OK, everyone, I think we need to let the Sheikh go, inshallah. <laughs> Yeah. The Sheikh said that because I've already translated for everyone, he's not going to talk in another language. Is that all right? Inshallah. Some brothers they say that if you say a few words in Arabic, Sheikh said that everyone understood the language, there's no point repeating. But he just said in Arabic the same thing again, that please concentrate on your children, focus on your children, give them this loving nurturing. This is very important. We're going to let the Sheikh go now because he used to continue to another program. Uh, try not to meet him and greet him and hug him. He's not well, so just from far away, just let the Sheikh uh, do the salam.